Becky. How are you this morning? I am doing great. Hello, Leah. How are you? Fabulous, fabulous. It's beautiful out there today. So mm -hmm. always, always a good day. Um, for our viewers, I would like to introduce my guest, Becky. She's joining me today. Allison has a vacation day schedule, so she's off having fun. Actually, I think she said she was cleaning her kitchen, whatever. I don't judge. <laughs> so Becky is joining me. She is the director of the Fairfield County District Library. So thank you for joining me. You are welcome. I was really excited. Like when you guys started doing this at the beginning of summer, I think the first thing I said to you was, do you think I could be on it? <laughs> when Allison said, she's like, well, I'm going to take a vacation day. So maybe you could. I was like, yes, please. There's probably a way that we could we could we could do a, a three person one, but I haven't figured that out yet. Like, yeah. It's in there. I just I haven't had time to sit down and learn the software all the way through. So okay. good morning, mm -hmm. Melanie. How are you today? Um, yeah. So. Yes, yeah, so I'm the library director. My name is Becky Shade. I live here in Lancaster um, and I've been director for almost three years now. Um, but before that, I was in charge of the children's department for the Fairfield County District Library for a lot of years. Um, 12, 13, 15, not sure, a lot of years. Um, so <clears throat> that's kind of my background, but I do tell everyone that talking is one of my superpowers. So I am pretty excited that uh, I have this opportunity to show it off. Talking is um, not frequently a superpower for a librarian, um, but <laughs> I'm a good talker. And I have uh, the distinction of having been the only librarian I personally know that has been shushed by a customer. Um, that happened to me once. Did you? Me too. Yes. No. It's very interesting. Yeah, the library is not really a quiet place anymore. I think it's fair to say we're in in normal times, uh, very busy. Um, we've got you know early literacy things going on, and kids, and parents, and adults, and teens, and and lots of people there. So it's not quiet anymore, um, which I think is awesome. But occasionally, uh, people kind of remember you know the the library of their youth, where maybe somebody. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, talking is my superpower and I'm excited to show it off to you all today. <laughs> so Becky, I think you need to show them that cup you're drinking out of because it is adorable. Yes. So this is uh, my new newest mug. Um, I had to really think very carefully once I was invited to do lattes with librarians. I really had to plan out my mug use. And this little Nomi guy, get it there, is uh, who I chose to use. Um, and I picked this one um, because actually my son and I painted him. He is a shade original. Um, <laughs> we, we, I think commonly you try to do, you know, fun stuff over the summer and, and have, you know, a good time. And this summer has been a little bit of a struggle um, in that realm. Very different, yes. Right, right, for everybody. Um, so one of the things we did to inject a little bit of fun um, was do to go painting um, from Art and Clay in Lancaster. So we were able to pick out our piece, pick out our colors, take them home and paint. And, and I will tell you the key to the bright colors here is um, lots and lots of coats of paint. <laughs> so we did it probably <laughs> four times, I bet. Um, but he turned out awesome, and so I wanted to use uh, him as as my mug for today. I know every week Allison's got all of these cool mugs, and it's just like I I don't have like a collection of mugs, so I don't usually have a mug that's up to par. But like you, I do have a mug that I painted at Art and Clay. Um, it's actually I don't know if you can tell. It's a I think it's actually a soup bowl. It's huge. I mean, look at my hand on this mug. This is a soup bowl. It's not a mug, but um, I use it as a mug. It's a very serious cup of coffee mug. And I just have little stars on it. And I got that by putting little stickers on before I painted. Well, I painted the light blue and then I put the sticker on and then I painted over the sticker with the dark blue. And then when it was dry, I peeled the stickers off. So I got that light blue stars coming through the dark blue sky. So it's actually a... a, a 
cup that I painted for my mother, but um, I totally use it um, when I need a big old cup of coffee. Looks <laughs> like so we've got some awesome people here today, Audrey and Lisa and Allison, who's supposed to be on vacation, and Carrie and Sarah, Miss Judith, and Liz. Liz is here. More coffee, more action. Exactly, Liz. So it's I think Liz joined awesome. us. Sorry. Liz joined us, I think, last night for Harry Potter trivia, if, if it is the same person. And mm -hmm. we had so much fun. It was the first time we had done something like that. And it went so well. So great job to Allison, who ran that trivia program for us. And uh, look for some more, I think, in the in the fall. We'll try to do something like that again. It was a great time. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to do that. I'm sorry I missed it. I had a migraine. But uh, much better today. Mm -hmm. So as we know, um, this year has been very, very different mm -hmm. and it's been, um, a, a little hard to get through. And I know that for a while there, like concentrating on anything was really difficult for me. Did you have that problem, Becky? I did like toward the very beginning of the pandemic, like March, it just, it felt like things were changing so quickly. Um, and it was, you know, it, it was a kind of a scary time. I think it's fair to say for, for a lot of people. And obviously as a librarian, I'm not going to shock you here. One of my most favorite hobbies is reading. Um, and it has gotten me through many tough times in my life and many great times too. Like I, I read every day. Like that's just, you know, I, that's what I do. And, um, it was really hard for me at the beginning of the pandemic, um, to like, sit down and focus enough to be able to read. Like I'd try and then I'd be, you know, five pages later and no, gone. You know? Exact same problem. I don't think in the month of March and April, I read a single whole book. Yeah. 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 And that was, it was really hard for me. I mean, when you're doing something every day and it's kind of your coping mechanism for life, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> that was that was really hard. Um, but I did find something, um, as strange as it sounds, that made me get back into that habit of reading. Um, and I wanted, Leah asked what I wanted to talk about today. And I said, could we talk about apocalyptic fiction? <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that too dark? Because kind of my favorite, anyway, um, I really, I'm a really big fan of stories about the end of the world. And it was, strangely enough, like, the very first book that I could read again, like, that I was able to, like, focus on and be like, okay, um, was one about the end of the world. And, or the end of the world as we know it. Um, I feel <laughs> fine. So... <laughs> REM fan. I'm, I'm there with you. But <laughs> I read, so the very first book I was able to finish in quarantine was, forgive me with the, there we go, uh, by Mira Grant. And this book came out in 2010. Um, and it is one that I have recommended to bunches of people because I really loved it. It is about uh, zombie apocalypse. So not just regular apocalypse. We're going to add the layer of zombies on top of that. And I have to tell you, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, <laughs> the thing that I love about Feed, and it's the first book in a trilogy. The trilogy is called the News Flesh Trilogy. And I recommend them all for sure. Like once you read the first book, that series. Yes. yeah, you're going to want to read them all. Um, and the thing I loved about it was the author does such a good job of like building the whole world. Like, yeah, well, she's talking of everything, everything that has to change, you know, when, when zombies are just a fact of life, mm -hmm. it was, it was fascinating. I, I love that series too. And when we got started talking about this, I got me very excited for it again. And I'll confess, I started listening to it again last night and it is just, I, I, I love it. I'm so excited for this series. Mm -hmm. It is really good, really good. And like, just like this, this science world building that she does, yeah. I think is just awesome. It's not just your regular, like, oh, eating brains kind of a, a zombie book, I would say. Um, so I see a comment, somebody said they do not like apocalyptic mm -hmm. fiction. I get that for sure. Like, 
100 <laughs> percent. if it wasn't your thing before all this i am guessing it's definitely not your thing now and that's okay um yeah. but if it was or you're interested i would definitely check out feed uh, by mira grant i actually like she writes um a lot of stuff she has a, a couple pen names actually uh mm -hmm. mcguire she writes under and i really i i read just about everything she publishes um, because I enjoy it. Not all of it is, is zombie apocalypse type stuff. Yeah. Um, some, it, it is all, I would say, fantasy science fiction um, mm -hmm. based worlds, uh, but Feed definitely is is the Melanie, or <laughs> Melanie, I think it's Melanie, I read it out loud. Um, oh yeah, no, no. So the title is Feed. The first book in the series is Feed. Uh, by Mira Grant, and um, we have them in Libby. Um, if you're looking, yes. uh, Mel, uh, we posted a link there to to the books in Libby. So if you're if you want to check them out, you might have to go on holds list because somebody has the first book checked out. But um, <laughs> the holds list goes pretty fast, and let me tell you, I get through them quickly. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So I would check that out. I so I read. Um, that's certainly not the only uh, apocalyptic fiction book I have uh, read this year, but that was the one that kind of like got me back into that habit yeah. of reading and being able to like do that and separate myself kind of from the real world um, enough to to be able to do that, which was a huge blessing for me for sure because I needed that. Um, and once I broke through that wall, I was able to to go on to some other stuff and read. But yeah, definitely recommend feed. And Lisa mentioned Max Brooks, and he wrote um, World War Z, which is another zombie book that I listened to and I really loved. It is, it, it, you know, it, it talks about you, you, how the about the zombies taking over and fighting to survive, and it was it was a really really good book. It was a really different movie. Um, mm -hmm. The movie and the book were very dissimilar like they were and actually i saw a quote um max books he's like it wasn't my book so i could enjoy the movie as just a different story mm -hmm. and because it, it was so different it was just completely different that he was he, he's like yeah they kind of took a kernel of it and but i could enjoy the movie as just a separate story because it is it's just so very different from the book so even if you've seen um the movie read the book it's a it's it's worth it's worth a read if you're Definitely. looking for a zombie story. For sure. While we're on the topic, I made my like top five apocalyptic fiction titles. Um, and I will say, so here's the thing. When you're a librarian, everyone wants to know what your favorite book is. And There's that's no not a fair question. Let me just put it out there for you people. That is not a fair question. It's kind of like asking who your favorite child is. And I'm not saying I don't have a favorite child. I'm saying that it depends on the circumstances. You've only got one child. You better have a favorite. Well, I suppose that is true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like asking my grandmother who had 18 children, which were right. different. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Depending on the circumstances, the, my favorite book of the day is going to change depending on who I'm talking to, what I'm reading, all of those things. But I definitely do have some favorites um, as far as apocalyptic fiction goes. Um, and I sent a, a couple titles to Leah just so we had some stuff to talk about. So I mentioned at the beginning of the show that I was a children's librarian for lots and lots of years. Um, so it's probably no surprise that several of those titles on my list were, were titles for uh, teens. Um, not a ton of apocalyptic fiction for young kids, I will tell you, not a popular picture book. No. <laughs> Amazingly, but no. Um, but lots of, there are a lot of yes. apocalyptic, dystopian, you know, kind of. Uh, lots and lots of dystopian fiction for sure. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So if you're looking for some new uh, pandemic reads, um, as far as teen titles, I would go, one I would recommend is Life As We Knew It by, I have to look at this, Susan, she, Pfeiffer. Susan Beth Pfeiffer. Thank you. Um, and great great series um i would did you read that one yes you recommended it to me and i went through like the books so fast they were fabulous you know the you, you, i don't want to give it away but it happens very quickly in the story so like the moon gets struck with an asteroid is it yeah and 
it, it just messes up everything. And you don't even think about like what, what all that affects, but she does. And like, it's like a cascading um, natural disaster after natural disaster. And it's just kind of like, wow, yeah, that was fascinating. Mm -hmm. I love that series. It is. It really is good. Um, Liz put in the comments, my first apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there could be a market for that, Liz. I think you should write it. Like I <laughs> <We're right> now. <laughs> there you go. You don't you never know. But <laughs> so Life as We Knew It, uh, by Susan Beth Pfeiffer for sure. Um, recommend it's the first in a trilogy as well. Um, so it definitely, definitely worth your time. Um, if you've got a teenager who's looking for something to read, um, I would recommend it for sure um, for them as well. Um, so my other teen uh, apocalyptic title is Z for Zachariah, which is kind of an old school classic, Robert O'Brien. And mm -hmm. I have to tell you, Leah, so two sad things I found out about this book yesterday. Yeah. Number one, we no longer have it at the Fairfield County District Library. Which does happen. Yeah, well, oh, hold on. You wait for the sad thing number two. <laughs> the first sad thing is we don't have it anymore at our library. Um, we do have it available digitally. It is available in CLC, so you can um, put it on hold. But the second sad thing I found out is it's out of print. Out of print. I think when a good book series does that, and you just can't get replacement copies because that. You know, in the library, things fall apart. They go through dozens and dozens of hands. And, you know, at some point, the binding's going to give, the pages are going to tear. They just don't, library books don't last forever. And it always cracks me up when someone's like, well, I borrowed this book from the library about 10 years ago. And I'm like, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Um, things things happen. Cups of coffee get spilled. <sighs> Cry out when that happens. But, you know, um, I, I saw that you'd recommended that and I was like, Ooh, I haven't read that one. I'll have to check that one out. So yeah. yeah, definitely check it out. I mean, there are still copies available and uh, maybe this will be my impetus to lobby those publishers and say, what the heck are you doing? We need that book more than ever now. Um, but currently out of print. Oh, I hate it when they do that. Like I feel yeah. like a personal injury. <laughs> Absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. Life changing events. Yes, world change of changing events. I haven't read that one, Allison, so you'll have to let us know what it's about. Um, have you read that one? I have not read that one, of course. Um, so Hank Green is John Green's brother, if, if we're thinking of the same person. Um, and I love John Green. So I am 100% willing to uh, check out Hank Green. And I know of his like nerd fighter stuff online. <laughs> In case you weren't sure if I was a nerd, there you go, clinched. But <laughs> well, I one of the, the 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 books that I wanted to talk series that I wanted to talk about, um, I was looking for it, and I saw that John Green recommends it. Um, <laughs> it's actually a pre-apocalyptic fiction. Mm. Uh, I don't think that's a subject, but that that's that's when it takes place in time. Um, an asteroid is headed directly for Earth, and people have six months to live. And um, it's kind of it, it, the the series takes place in that time, in that like six months before the asteroid strikes. Well, I'll, I haven't read the third book in the series yet. I've only read the first two. Um, it's called The Last Policeman um, because you know people are kind of like, oh well, world's ending. They don't take things seriously. Um, well, you know, the economy is in free fall and people are walking away from their jobs and no one is doing anything. Um, well, people aren't like doing their best work. And um, But he's a policeman. So there's, a, it, everyone's convinced it's a suicide because like the world's ending and people are committing suicide a lot right now. But he's like, mm -mm, this is a murder. And people are like, so <laughs> world's going to end. What does it matter? But he's like investigating that murder. So he's, he's staying true to, you know, his profession and his job while the world around you is just crumbling. And it's like, it's very interesting. Like the, the world that he creates in that series, um, 
as you're leading up to the end of the world. And so it's, it's an interesting take on end of the world fiction because it's before the end of the world. But so yeah, it's, it's a really interesting series. And like I said, I haven't gotten to the third book, so I don't know how it ends, but um, pre-apocalyptic fiction, uh, The Last Policeman by Ben H. Winters. And they are available in Libby. Awesome. Well, I, so like, many of our uh, fans, I'm sure. I have a very long uh, to be read, like TBR list that I keep on my phone. So if you notice me looking down uh, while Leo was talking, it's because I was typing that into my list. I keep a notes uh, file for all the books because the other thing that happens that's awesome when you're a librarian is everyone wants to tell you about the book they're reading that they really love. Um, and I love that. I always love new recommendations. Oh, so God. yeah, so I, just, I have to write them down though, because otherwise out of my head. Um, but I'm putting The Last Policeman on hold. That sounds exactly like my kind of book. Yeah, yeah, it, it looks really, um, it's really good. And I'm really, really interested to see the third book, like how it actually ends because, you know, I haven't gotten there yet. So I wanna know like, does the asteroid hit? Do really, I, I don't know. I'm very excited for, for the end of it. Um, Awesome stuff happening in the comments. Allison gave us a description of the book she was mentioning by Hank Green and Audrey um, gave a recommendation for a great kids dystopian book, uh, One Safe Place by Tanya. And then it went away, Unsworth, Unsworth. And we do own that. You can put it on hold if you are um, like a physical book reader. Um, and of course, check out our e-resources to see if it's there. Um, <laughs> Allison has four draft emails of books that where she keeps book titles for different genres or formats. I love that. that I actually have a spreadsheet um, and it's got different tabs for, for nonfiction and graphic novels and fiction. And, uh, and I finally got to the point where I actually had to divide up my fiction and start doing like mysteries and romance and um, because they were all getting confused. And so many books have such similar titles that it's, yeah. Yeah. So I need to up my to be read game, obviously, <laughs> because I'm very intrigued by the spreadsheet idea. Uh, I could see how that would work mm -hmm. for me, for yeah. sure. It's a little bit <laughs> embarrassing. Um, I, I lost it once on my computer and because it's on my work computer. And Ruchi had to make it. I don't know if it was Ruchi or Mary, but one of them had to get it for me <laughs> from the backups. I'm like, I can't lose this list. <laughs> because it's I put so much time into it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm very serious about my to be read list. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I have one more. I feel like I could not mention, uh, you know, end of the world fiction without bringing up this one. Um, it is. Ooh, there we go. That glare is the real deal there. And I have the to figure out which hand to move. The Road <laughs> uh, by Cormac McCarthy. Um, so I will say, let me give my caveat, A, adult book, B, uh, incredibly depressing. So maybe not the book for right now, but I will say it was a very good book. Good is really a bad descriptor <laughs> of this book. It was, yeah. it, it sucks you in and you can do nothing except finish this book that has to happen, um, which I love. I love that, like, yes. you know, when you're so sucked into a book that you, there's just, there's no cooking, there's no cleaning, uh, there is nothing, nothing but that book. <laughs> I hope that's not just me. I hope that is other people too. That happened to me with the Hunger Games series, and I know that that's not post-apocalyptic, but it's dystopian, so that's enough. Um, that happened to me with the Hunger Games books, and I'm so glad that I waited to read them until all three of them were out because mm. I just, they gave me such anxiety. Like, I'm not a super anxious person. I mean, sure, things make me anxious, but I'm not super anxious. That Those books gave me such anxiety, and I had, like, dreams that were just, like, terrifying while I was reading that those books. So it was just, like, I, I had to get through them and yeah, I couldn't concentrate on anything else while, and I was like, I was a little bit mad that I had to go to work um, <laughs> because I just wanted to finish those books. So yeah, th those got read very quickly and back to back and didn't do anything for like that week while I was reading those books. Yeah. So definitely highly recommend The Road 
Um, it's, it's interesting to me. I was talking to somebody else um, about this topic recently and I, they had read the road on my recommendation and had agreed that it was just a profound book. And mm -hmm. she asked me when it was published. Do you have a guess, Leah? Do you know? Road? The Road? No. No. 2006. Really? I, 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 I know. That's been so recent. Like an, like an older one that they've been... Huh. Same. I was like, wow, I would have guessed like 60s, 70s. Like, yeah. I don't I don't know. Like, it. that was... I was kind of stunned by that, truthfully. Um, Cormac yeah, McCarthy. I didn't say book. Book. Yeah, but I didn't say his uh, the author's name before Cormac McCarthy for the road. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you've been warned. If your family's going to want dinner, don't don't start that book. So <laughs> <laughs> or order pizza, like whatever. But for sure, for sure. I can't even keep up with the comments today. I love when people talk. Um, you know, in the comments about the books that they love and read, but I saw it you started Walking Dead series. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Yeah, I was a comic Walking Dead fan for sure. And they also have like Walking Dead books. Like, I don't know if you knew that, but there are like some books that they've turned that um, oh. they're, they're based on the Walking Dead comics, but they've turned them into like more stories. Like, you know, it's, it's a book without pictures and 300 pages. And so those are out there too. I may have to check that out. I did when The Walking Dead was um, just first like a thing. I read some of the graphic novels. The graphic novel is not like my favorite format. Um, and I know tons of people like it. So don't come at me. I respect <laughs> it as a genre. It's just not like my favorite genre. Um, right. But so I did try some of those, but I just I found it like not my deal so i might have to check out the novelizations that could be yeah and i did just double check like liz said i thought it was the girl i didn't see when i was scared so i double checked the copyright of the book and it is 2006. i was like maybe i made that up sometimes i dream things but yeah <laughs> oh no i thought it was really old too yeah <laughs> maybe just because it's just see I wow Audrey says blasphemy graphic novels are the best and I know we I, knowing some of those people that are that are commenting right now I know we had some graphic novel fans so I know Mary loves them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Absolutely. I will say so if you are listening at home and are a graphic novel fan I think our library has an amazing graphic novel collection um so for sure check it out and part of that part of the reason that's true is we do have um, some staff members, some librarians who are very invested in that format. So that's awesome. They've been able to build that collection to, I, I think it's it's really top notch. So check it out. Obviously, all of those can be put on hold. Um, you can call in, you can do it on the computer. Uh, right now we're curbside only for picking up, but that doesn't affect you being able to get those materials. We will um, and I will shout out, Hoopla has a nice graphic novel collection as well, digitally. Um, and Lily is recommending The Power. She says it's not post-apocalyptic, but definitely interesting alternative future. Do you know who the author of that one is? Because that sounds familiar, but. Maybe, uh, anyway, maybe she'll come up with it. If not, I'll find mm -hmm. it and post the, post the author as a comment to that. But yeah, yeah, we, we do have a pretty awesome graphic novel collection. I am. It's growing every day because mm -hmm. Mary can help herself. <laughs> when we were talking at the beginning of the show about, you know, like the library from your childhood, like I have a hard time imagining graphic novels fitting into the library from my childhood. So I'm really excited that we're able to have those now. And that's like a thing. Yeah, not at all. The the library that from my childhood. I remember, I was not allowed when you were a kid, you're not allowed upstairs mm -hmm. in the library. Like mm -hmm. that was that was the adult section. Like what's yeah. up there? It was just the nonfiction books. But yeah, you, kids were not allowed up there. You know? <laughs> and I remember we'll from time to time, mom would go up, and I was so jealous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it first off, Leah's library when she was a kid was not the Fairfield County it District was Library. <laughs> that was like a different thing. Um, my library when I was growing up, um, I have to say we had some awesome librarians who were I, I was you know shocker a big reader <laughs> and we would go all the time and um read lots and lots and lots of books and they would set stuff aside for me um i remember i was probably 11 when i read gone with the wind and they were so excited like that's a thick book 
Like yeah. whether it's good or not can be debated for sure, but it is a big book. Um, and as an 11 year old, like I was super proud at having done that. And um, it was, they were so, they were very like supportive of that. Like, Oh, if you like this, you should try that. That kind of thing. Yeah. I, uh, I, I actually ended up working in that library when I was, um, it was where I decided I loved being a librarian and, and um, was going to go to library school, but I worked there after college and um, they were no longer forbidding kids from going into the nonfiction collection, I think, but it was, they, they were great. And I loved, I loved that small town library feel because I would do that. I would put uh, books aside for, for patrons because I knew that they would love them. And sometimes, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little jealous of the branches because they do, you get to build some of those relationships that I think are harder to build at the main library because we do serve so many more people. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, all right. So yeah. we've talked for like half an hour <laughs> <laughs> and it feels like it's been about five minutes. And Lily did come back with the author for the power, Naomi Alderman. Naomi okay. Alderman is the author. I will check that out, Lily. I have not heard of that. And obviously I'll add it to my to be read list. Um, mm -hmm. my new spreadsheet that I'm debuting soon. <laughs> I even color coded it. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. That does not surprise me. I like color. I might need you to forward me that list though. So then I have like this the the setup already there. And and generally speaking, if Leo likes a book, I would like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do have very similar tastes. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, this has been great fun, but we should, I guess, let people go. Mm -hmm. Um, we won't take up their whole morning. But thanks for joining me this week. Um thank I'm you sure for having me back later. So mm -hmm. I'll just go ahead and say bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Next week, Friday, 1030. Where do I? Okay. Oh, there we go. Allison usually does this part, so I'm like, how do I stop it? I, I found it. <laughs> <laughs> bye. <laughs>